This is Team UA 2021, paper 2, question 9. You want to work out which of these three statements is a sufficient condition for f of x equals 0 to have a real solution where f is a polynomial. The first one is f of x is of the form px cubed plus qx squared plus rx plus s, with p not equal to 0. Statement 2 is saying there's a real number t for which f prime of t is equal to 0. Statement 3 is saying there are real numbers u and v for which f of u times f of v is less than 0. So what does it mean for it to be sufficient? Well, that's precisely, precisely saying that if our statement holds, then f of x equals 0 has a real solution. So let's look at statement 1 first. What is this thing saying? Well, it's saying it's a cubic polynomial with p not equal to 0, means it must be a cubic and not a quadratic or linear term. So if f is a cubic, what does that mean? Well, it precisely means because it's a cubic, it goes from minus infinity to infinity or the other way around. So it's going to have a graph which looks like this, where it starts off at minus infinity and then it increases up to infinity. Or it's going to do something like this, going the other way around. In either of these cases, it must cross the x-axis somewhere as it's continuous. So if you go from minus infinity and you must end up at plus infinity, you must cross the x-axis somewhere. So it is sufficient. What about the second statement? Um, that's precisely saying, if there's a real number t for which f prime of t is 0, it means there's a point where the graph of f has 0 gradient. Do you think this is sufficient? Well, no, because you can find an easy counterexample for this. What would this be? Well, you can just take the constant line, f of x equals 1 for all x. This is certainly a polynomial, and this would just be a horizontal line and the derivative of f is 0 for all x, but because it's a horizontal line, it will never cross the x-axis. So 2 is not sufficient. What about statement 3? Well, this is saying, if there are u, f of u times f of v is less than 0, this means that f in u and f of v have opposite signs. So either f of u is less than 0 and f of v is bigger than 0, or it's the other way around. So what does this mean? Well, this looks something similar to case 1. If f of u is less than 0, that means f of u is going to be below the x-axis. So there's a point below the x-axis, and there's going to be a point above the x-axis. So, by continuity, because f is a polynomial, it must cross the x-axis somewhere. You can't just jump from below the x-axis to above it without passing it originally. So the third statement is sufficient. So only 1 and 3 are sufficient, so the answer is C.